We're blessed, right? Amen. Blessed and highly flavored. Praise God. God is good all the time. Thank you, Master. You know, to know Him is the most extraordinary, awesome thing. To know Him. And I'm not saying to read about Him. I said to know Him. See, a lot of people read about Him and think they know Him, but they really don't know Him. Come on. It's like reading a Sports Illustrated book or a magazine. You can read all about a person and never meet them. See, these are traditions of religiosity. In the relationship, you know him. You begin to know his voice. You begin to know his character. You, begin to, you know what he desires. You know what pleases him. You know what displeases him. Because there's a relationship that's building. It all starts off with discipline. If you're not in the Word, it's impossible to know Him. You may read about Him. Amen? Amen. So it will bring you to a place to give you a thirst and hunger to want to know Him. Does everybody understand that? You can only know Him in His presence. Amen. You cannot know Him by what you read. You can know about him by what you read, but you cannot know him until you get in his presence. Amen. And when you get in his presence, because he's a person, it's his presence that sustains everything. And that's what separates individuals. Because there's a lot of people, they say they know him, but they really don't. Amen. We are in a season and a time right now where you're going to see a separation. God is trying to draw back or draw in those that say they know him, but they really don't know him. They've only read about him. Some of them don't even read about him. Amen. They have no, 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 no understanding. Because they're still carnal. They're still in the world. You worship who you know. Amen. It's amazing. I always... Because see, the word says something very powerful. It says, we're two or more gathered together, so is he. See, but there is no reality to that if you just read about him and don't know him. So what happens is it brings you into a place of expectation because you're desiring and you're wanting and you're waiting for him to show up. It's like somebody called you on the phone and said, yo, I'll be over there in five minutes. So there's an expectation. See, there should be an expectation when you worship. You don't stop until he touches you. Amen. But if you don't know him, you just, eh, just another day. See, but as a new believer in Christ Jesus, as a spirit-filled believer, we can't survive without being filled. That's, that's a desire. There's something that's happening. Why? Because I am, a, as a new believer, I have set a course of a new way of life. A new way of life. It's called a, a, an eternal life. No longer wanting the life that I used to have or desire that life. Or associating with the things of that life but living and stepping every day into a new life, wanting to know him more and more and more. That should be a desire with every born-again believer. If it's not there, that person's in trouble. There's a place where you will to be, not just a want to be. You will it. Why? Because you have dominion over your will. Well, you should anyways. <laughs> You should have dominion over your soul. Your soul will always have dominion over you unless your spirit man is strong enough. Does everybody understand that? That's why it's vitally important to be filled with the spirit of God because your spirit is what communes with God. Your soul is what it interprets. And your body does the work. Would you turn to Hebrews 10? Hebrews 10. 
We are, have been in a year of what we call exposure. God is exposing those who are with him and those who are against him. So you're either with or against one or the other. There is no in between. Amen? Amen. And the purpose of exposure is to hope that people come to repentance and get back in position. Because when you really think about it, that's all that matters is when you stand before him. But you should be standing before him every single day. Not just waiting to go home to stand before him. Because if there's truly a relationship, it's an everyday standing before him. Hebrew. Chapter 10. Is everybody there? Amen. Praise God. Verse 15. Let's speak because what you speak is what you eat. And the word says something powerful. It says that the Father, the Father, the Father searches those who will worship him in truth and spirit. Wow. So don't you want the Father to look for you? <laughs> yeah. Waiting for him to show up. Slam me. I love getting slammed. Verse 15, would you read it with me? But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us, for after he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my what? My laws, my words into their hearts and into their minds, and I will write them. Then he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now, where there is remission of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way. A what? A new and living way. Everyone say the new way. The new way. I'm about the new way. Because I'm with Yahweh. No longer the highway. <laughs> Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he sanctified for us. In other words, there is a fixed position through the veil that is his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw. Let us what? How are you going to draw? And I don't mean with a pen or pencil or a piece of art. This means draw near to him. You draw near to him, he draws near to you. Amen? Many people are still waiting for God to touch them when they're not willing to touch that person to touch him. You touch him, he touches you. Amen? Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with what? Pure water. Pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to what? Stir up love and good works. Not for what? Forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as it is the manner of some, but exhorting one another so much the more as you see the day what? Approaching. This is a new way of life. You, you are, God has called you. He chose you. You didn't choose him. Now, you must accept that calling and accept that choice of this new way of life. He, these laws, in other words, because you and I were, we, we were lawless. We were practicing wicked things. So he's putting laws in me and you so that we no longer are lawless. So there's an area where in me and you now, we desire to reject sin. As a new way of life. There is a desire to reject sin. Not accept it. Not even compromise it or pet it. We reject it. We hate it. If you don't hate it, you're in trouble. If you don't hate evil, you're in trouble. Does everybody get it? Amen. Now, this new way of life, these laws that have been given to us, is because it removes us from lawlessness because we desire to reject sin. And it grants me and you now access to the created savor and fellowship as offsprings of eternity. We are offsprings of eternity. See, people still don't know who they are. 
They're just trying to find their identity in everything. Many of them are trying to find identity in their jobs, their talents, associations. Your identity is in nothing else as a new Christian in Christ Jesus, but in Jesus. That's who your identity is. It's not what you've done, what you can do, or what you're doing, whatever position you are. I don't care if you're a pastor, evangelist, teacher, a mother, a father. That's not your identity. My identity is not as a, a, a minister. It's my identity is in Christ. That's it. It's who I am in him and who he is in me. That's how it is. If there's anything else, I'm in trouble. Why? Because then there's an open door of access for the powers of darkness to access me. It's not a kind of father I am. It's not kind of, well, uh, well, my husband, I'm a husband. That, those are not my identities. And we must remove ourselves from all of these false identities because those our identities are called temporary. You want an eternal identity, not a temporary identity. It puts you in another place of a state of mind and a state of position in the spirit. Is everybody Okay. So we have access to the created Savior and fellowship as offsprings of eternity. We are separated, sanctified, and positioned by the blood of Christ, the sacrifice for me and you. We gather and assemble to maintain the new way of life because the new way of life puts a fixed position for me and you. It's a positioning. And it's our responsibility to maintain that position. So when you and I assemble, we main, there's a maintenance. It's, it's upkeeping. We get encouraged. We get trained. We get stirred up to keep us in a new positional way of life and everything that we do. Acts chapter 9. The new way. Is everybody okay? Amen. Acts chapter 9. Jesus. In verse 1, we'll start there. It says, In Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any who were of the, the way, the new way of life, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. So here we have Saul, who was a religious fanatic, thought he was doing the right things for God. But he was not filled with the Spirit. Here was Jesus preaching and so forth, but he was departed, left all the disciples behind that got filled with the Holy Spirit, which was a command from God. Even Ananias and all them, they were all filled with the Spirit of God. And so Paul, Saul, who became Paul, is out gathering them together who were of a new way of life. That's no different than what we call terrorists these days. They were killing people that were Christians. Even the religious sect was still killing Christians. They were being persecuted. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. God had to do some intervention. Amen. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Why? Because when, when you persecute God's children, you're persecuting him. And he's the avenger. Nobody gets away with it. They may think they do, but nobody gets away with nothing. And he said, who are you, Lord? Ah, there was a revelation, I would say. <laughs> who are you, Lord? Nobody can do this to me but God. <laughs> and he said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. It's hard for you to kick against the goads. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what 
do you want me to do? I want you to understand something. That should always be. When you've already accepted, who are you, Lord? You know that Lord is Jesus. Then there should be a something that's always following. What do you want me to do? Every day of your life, it should be, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? And every decision, you no longer make your decisions. He does. What do you want me to do? Why? Because I'm in a new way of life. I need the direction, counsel. I need protection. I want my steps to be established and my thoughts to be established by the spirit of the living God. So in this new way of life, I'm always, and we are always, if you're a new believer in Christ, if you're truly a believer of Christ, there should always be, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Does everybody get it? Who are you? What do you want me to do? Why? Because, listen, it only takes one wrong choice to take you off course. That's all it takes. Some people are off course and don't even know it. Some people have never even been on course and don't even know it. Amen? Because there's a new way of life that puts us on a totally different course. How many of you know God can change your course? He'll protect you from a course of destruction. That's one of his promises. He rescues me from a life of destruction. But if you don't know the promise of God, you don't get it. Hello? Matthew 7. Here, Saul was persecuting those of the way of eternal life. <laughs> but he was on his way to eternal death. <laughs> But praise God, the Lord slammed him off his horse. High horse. Got filled with the Spirit of God. It was over with. Now, and, and through the Spirit of God, Paul wrote most of the New Testament. And he wrote it by getting revelation by praying in tongues. That will destroy the religious garbage. Hallelujah. Well, I don't believe in that stuff. Of course not. You're not filled with the Spirit. How could you? You can't even interpret the Word of God correctly. How many of y'all know it's only the Spirit of God that can interpret the Word of God? Amen. Amen? Matthew 7, 13. Are you ready for the new way? Amen. Let's read it, verse 13. Enter by the what? Narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. There are many. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way. Difficult's the way. Yeah. Which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Now, this is our words from Jesus. He said, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is what? Cut down and thrown in the, into the fire. Now, he's not talking about trees of the forest, hello? These are humans. He's talking about people. We are known as trees. Verse 20. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. Are you ready with 21? Hold on your seat now. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Now, that's pretty powerful. What's he saying? Many people are going to come to me and say, Lord, Lord, hey, yeah, I, I read all about you. He said, no, you didn't know me. You did your will and not mine. And you will not enter my kingdom because only those who... But I accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior 20 years ago. You still practice lawlessness? You chose to do your own way? Do your own will and didn't, and didn't follow me all the way home? You will not enter home. Depart from me. I do not know you. There's going to be a lot of really distressed people. You, and one of the problems is there's going to be a lot of distressed preachers because they don't preach it. Because they don't preach it. They just think, oh, just, everything's cool, man. Just accept Jesus. You're all right. Go ahead and sin. Have a good day. 
teaching people to live out of the soul instead of out of the spirit. Hello? Is everybody okay? Praise God. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Well, let me ask you this, because if you're really in that place, living in a new way, are you not asking the Lord, what should I do all the time? Amen. Amen. That's, well, that's, right. well, if you're asking that, then you're going to be doing his will, aren't you? What do you want me to do? I want you to do this. If you're not asking that, then you're not doing his will. It's impossible. 22, are you with me? Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice what? Lawlessness. Lawlessness. Because they were not willing to follow. See, the word believe means to follow. Amen? Amen. You can't say I believe and go your way. You believe and follow. Hello? Therefore, verse 24, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. What's the house? It's us. And it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. And the rock is associated with Christ Jesus, the anointed one, and his anointing. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand, quicksand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. So he says, difficult is the way of life. This new way of difficult, there'll be resistance. There's resistance. Difficult is the way of the new life because we live in a world ruled by deception, ruled by fear, ruled by lust, and ruled by death. And it is enforced by Satan's demons, devils, angels, and possessed human beings. And believe me, a possessed human being does not spin his head and spit out green stuff, okay? Anyone that's not born again of the Spirit is a possessed human being. And they don't even know it because they are doing the will of Satan and they are not doing the will of God. That means there's a demon in them controlling their will. Listen, until you get to a place where you believe in the word of God, <laughs> it must be that place. You must believe this. Does somebody understand? You must believe this word. You must believe that these are the voices of God Almighty when he spoke and they were recorded in this book. Of course, you can't record all of what he said, but the Holy Spirit's got a recording of all of what he said. Amen. Amen. That's how we're able to interpret the word of God. When you believe it, in other words, you can't get into a place without believing it before you can believe for it. Amen? In other words, if you don't believe in the word of God, it's not going to work for you. You must believe it for it to work for you. 2 Thessalonians 2. The new way. Turn to your neighbor and say, we're staying the new way. Second Thessalonians 2. That's why Jesus was cool. I mean, he let it right off the bat. He said, hey, I am the way. I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. What was he saying? Here's a course of a new way. Verse 13. The new way. Many fall off course of the new way. Is everybody there? But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you. Everyone say, he chose me. Chose me. For salvation through what? Sanctification. Sanctification. By the Spirit and belief in the truth. Now, grab hold of something. Salvation through sanctification. Sanctification is associated with a separation or a fixed position. It's a fixed position God has for me and you. 
Why? You're his. He has set you apart. And he says, the only way that this can be maintained, if you are led by my spirit and living in my truth. So everybody got it. What's the two things that maintain it? Led by the spirit and living in the truth. So everybody got it. Or else you will fall from that fixed position of sanctification. Oh, yeah. Verse 14. Actually, let's go back to 13 again so we can get refreshed. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through the sanctification, fixed position, by the Spirit, and belief in the truth. In other words, be led, if, you're, be, if you're led by the Spirit of God and you're living in the truth, you'll maintain that sanctification state, that fixed position, in which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, do what? Stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or by our epistle. And now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Salvation through sanctification. It's a fixed position by being led by the Spirit and living in the truth. It is a place of protection. Are you ready? Write it. It's a place of protection, perfection, and, perf and purpose. It's a place of protection, perfection, and purpose. If you're not in that position, those things won't be there. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Salvation through sanctification. Again, sanctification is a separation. It is a place where God takes you apart and puts you in a fixed position. And those fixed position is maintained by being led by the Spirit and living in truth. But again, the enemy wants to get you off course. Amen? Amen. In verse 1, let's speak it. Finally then, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and how to what? Please God. So if you're not being led by the Spirit and living in the truth, is there, can you please God? No. Hello? Verse 2. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God for your what? Sanctification. Now, what is sanctification? It is a fixed position that you should abstain from sexual immorality. It's amazing to me how many people think that you can accept Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, and just go out and fornicate. And it's going to keep you in position. You got to be plumb stupid. There is no reality of God. There is no reality of conviction. There is no reality. It's been removed. Verse 4. That each one of you should know how to what? Possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles, like those who are bound or the world, who do not know God. It's amazing how many believers are still acting like they don't know God. That no one should, be, should take advantage of and defraud his brother in his matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such. As we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to what? Uncleanness, but in, in holiness. Wow. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. The new way or a fixed position brings a life where you are willing to do his will and looking for his guiding. You're always looking for his guidance. Amen? And he's always trying to guide us to a place of positional. There's a place of positional. Are you ready for this? He's guiding me and you to get into a fixed position. And this fixed position is called positional seeing, positional hearing. Has everybody got it? Positional seeing, positional hearing, and positional receiving. Hearing, our seeing, hearing, receiving. Why? So that you can execute his will. 
If you are not, you, if we're not executing his will, then we're not spiritually positioned in that arena. Because you got to be fixed. You got to be in that fixed position to execute his will. His will cannot be executed without you seeing and hearing. Has everybody got it? And it won't happen if you're not in position. That means you must be led by the Spirit and live a life of truth. Are you the new way? Amen. We are the, of the new way. Now, if Saul, the religious, was persecuting those of the new way, don't you think you'll be persecuted too? Resistance will come from all kinds of places. 2 Corinthians 4. Everything we hear, we're accountable. We have to be accountable. Everything you hear from the word, you're accountable. Well, uh, I, 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 uh, no, you're accountable. Everything, every one of us in this room that's hearing this word of God now is accountable. Has everybody got it? So I suggest you write notes. This is a teaching ministry. You're to be trained up. This is not to puff up your soul. Well, this is to beat us down so we can get rebuilt. Amen. Everybody got it? We want to be remolded in his image and not our own. That's why he put you on the potter's wheel. Hello? It's a new way. Oh, glory. Verse 7, let's speak it. But we have this what? Treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of not of us. We are what? Hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down and not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body of the dying, the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake. Now that's pretty wild, isn't it? See, because you're always denying yourself. So you're living, you're living a life of death to self, but a new life, a new way of Christ. That the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal bodies. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes that the grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Praise God. So we are these earthen vessels with an eternal glory in us if you're filled with the Spirit of God, if you're truly feeding your spirit, if you're eating and drinking of the Spirit and the Word of God. We are earthen vessels with eternal glory. We are clothed with new power as a new way. We are clothed with new power to what? To lay hold of possibilities and make them realities. We are clothed with a power to grab hold of possibilities and make them realities. Calling those things that are not as though they are. Why? Because Christ in us, Christ in us is for the world to see. It's for the world to see, not us to see. It's for the world to see. Lay hold the power that's on us is to lay hold of possibilities and make them realities because Christ in us is for the world to see. Proverbs 10, the new way. See, so many people come to Jesus and just think that's all they needed to do. They didn't think that there was any training. They didn't think that there was any, anything else. Just come to Jesus and that's all you got to do. Wrong. That's why he said, follow me. Remember, he didn't even go, when he began to pull the disciples out of the world, he didn't come up to them and say, believe me. He said, follow me. He tapped them. He says, yo, follow me. And they dropped everything and followed him. They didn't even know why they were following him. 
Then they began to see things happen and their belief system began to get stronger and stronger and their faith began to get stronger. And it was only by Jesus' presence that was sustaining them. That's why when he left, he left his presence. It's called the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proverbs 10, is everybody there? Amen. Verse 15. Proverbs 10, verse 15. What does it say? Oh, let's start at 14. I like 14. Wise people store up what? Knowledge. Knowledge. Yes. In other words, whatever you are taught, you should be able to teach. Wherever the Lord sends me, I don't care if I'm in any kind of service, I take notes because I'm going to get tested by him. Does everybody get it? You will be tested every time the word of God, wherever you go, is released. You will be tested. And you'll either earn his trust or lose it. Hallelujah. Wise people store up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. The rich man's wealth is in his strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. Are you ready? The labor of the righteous leads to what? To life. And the wages of the wicked to what? Sin. He who keeps instruction is the way of life. Are we getting instructed today? Not by a man, but by the Spirit. The anointing is what teaches us. So he says, he who keeps instruction is a way of life. But he who refuses correction goes what? Astray, goes off the new way of life. That's why it's important that we assemble so we can always maintain that course. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Proverbs 11. Verse 18. Is everybody there? Amen. The wicked man does deceptive work. But he who sows righteousness will have a sure reward. As righteousness leads to life, why does righteousness lead to life? Because when you're in a fixed position, you will be producing a fruit of righteousness. There's always a fruit of righteousness. A righteousness and justice. It's not about being good or bad or good or evil. You no longer live a life of good and evil. You live a life of righteousness. Why? Because you're eating the, the tree of life now, not the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Amen? Hallelujah. Verse 19. As righteousness leads to life, so he who pursues evil pursues it to his own death. Those who are of a perverse heart are an abomination to the Lord, but the blameless in their ways are his delight. Though they join forces, the wicked will not go unpunished, but the prosperity of the righteous will be what? Delivered. In other words, you'll be protected. Oh, glory. Proverbs 2. Proverbs 2 and verse 1. You all enjoying those seats in the back there? Ha! Don't get too comfortable. <laughs> we might have rows of them. Who knows? You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll have to attach some, something to them. <laughs> Proverbs 2, verse 1. Let's speak it. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will what? Understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the what? Upright. 
He is a shield to those who walk uprightly, and he guards the path of the justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity in every good path. Fixed position. This is all about being a fixed position. In a fixed position, which is called sanctification, there is a righteousness always being produced as a fruit. Righteousness leads to life. Instructions keep us in a new way of life. Righteousness always is leading to life. It's a fixed position. It will produce righteousness in itself. Amen? In this fixed position of the new way, there is a desire for divine wisdom. There is a desire. There's a, more, there's a thirst and hunger to want to understand more. There's a desire for not only divine wisdom, but understanding and knowledge. Why? To preserve the new way of life. See, now it's our responsibility to preserve it. It's our responsibility to maintain course. It's our responsibility not to get sucked out or deceived. It's our responsibility to live out of the spirit and not out of the mind. Amen? Or out of the soul. Ephesians chapter 1, please. Ephesians 1. Is everybody okay? Amen. Are you on course? In verse 15, Ephesians 1, 15. Let's speak it. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you what? The spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints. Where? In the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us, who believe or follow according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. Very powerful. In other words, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. What is it doing? It's granting us eyes to see. Remember we talked about a position. There was a positional, positional seeing and positional hearing. It's a divine thing. It's a divine revelation. It gives us divine vision. And in this understanding, you know, it gives me and you the hope of his glory, of what's proceeding, what's coming. And in this, we have the power of his resurrection where we are being perfected. Now, I know we all have flaws. Amen. But there's a place where there's a perfection. So it's his perfection that covers our imperfections. Amen. It's, it's his blood that covers our sins. It's his righteousness that covers our unrighteousness. As we are disconnected and maintain disconnection from the earth, then we become insulated by faith in him. Does everybody understand that? As we maintain a continuous disconnect from the earth, from the old way, then what happens is we become insulated by faith in him because we're feeding our new spirit man. We are a new way of life. We desire this new way of life. We don't want anything else. We live for him and no longer for us. In Hebrews 12. And then one more verse. One more scripture. Hebrew. Hebrew 12. You should get energized when you do the Hebrews. It's high test. Because Hebrew. Glory. Hebrew for you. <laughs> Verse 1, Hebrew 12. 
Are you ready? Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance. Everyone say endurance. endurance. Oh man, some of us need endurance just to praise and worship. Amen. With endurance, the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons and daughters. My son and daughter, do not despise the chastening of the Lord. Hello? Nor be discouraged when you are rebuked. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens, and he scourges every son whom he receives. So you're going to have to go through counsel, correction, and direction, little spanking here and there. Why? To keep us on course. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as sons. For what son is there whom the father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have been partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. This is where people run. Instead of receiving counsel, correction, and direction, they run. Because they're not able to re, uh, accept the chastening and correction of the Lord. And then they are illegitimate. Mm. Is everybody okay? Praise God. Verse 9. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect, shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chasten us as it seemed best to them, but he for our profit that we may be what? Partakers of what? His holiness. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but Painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who've been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may be dislocated, may not be dislocated, but rather be what? Healed. So we are in need of endurance. There must be a place where we withdraw. We relinquish. Our past. We withdraw from it and we relinquish our past. No longer looking back but going on. Pursuing his will, righteousness, love, and his face. As a fixed position, as living a fixed positional life in a new way, we are living in a place of an eternal, steadfast, and unmovable. God is looking for people that will not be moved. Amen? Can you trust someone that's not moved? Amen. What about someone that's easily moved? No, you can't trust them. Either can God. And I want to close at Psalm 15. The new way. As a fixed position in the new way of life, we are eternal, we are steadfast, and we are immovable. Verse 15. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? And who may dwell in your holy place, your holy hill? He who walks what? Uprightly. Uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. Now, wait a minute. Is that someone that's positioned? Amen. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, and whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and does not change. He who does not put out his money as usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things, he who is spiritually positioned as sanctification, it's a fixed position. He who does these things shall never be moved. Never be moved. We don't want to be moved no more. Amen? Amen. Because if we get moved, we can miss. How I many of y'all know when you get moved out of position, you miss? Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We desire the new way of life. We ask that you continue to empower us. We ask that you protect the seed that's been empowered in us. 
with the blood of Jesus, that you continue to fill us and establish us and perfect us as we look to you as our hope, strength, and life. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.